everyone. My name is Andi Nusha Damwada. Uh, I'm from PBI, PBI Class A with ID number 021. And here is I would like to tell you about all of the things that I have been learned in this course on, about this course analysis. So uh, first, there are some questions, ten questions actually, and then I will answer the question and also uh, to, ex to explain about this course analysis. So the first question is first question is about uh, the position of this course analysis in the theory of linguistics. So this course analysis have a very significant uh, position in linguistic itself. It provides a new understanding about the use of language in its social and cultural context. And also, uh, as we know, that this course analysis includes in the field of pragmatics that concern in uh, the study of language in its social context. So the this course analysis provides a new insight about uh, what to exam what we can examine in examining uh, this course in text or conversation. And also uh, it provides valuable insight into various aspects of communication and understanding of how the language is shaped by its cultural uh, social and historical context. Okay, number two. What is the difference between discourse analysis and error analysis in terms of the linguistic background and the content of analysis? So, in terms of its linguistic background, uh, discourse analysis includes in the field of pragmatics, which is concerned about the use of language in its social context while error analysis more into the part of phonetics, syntax, and semantic field. And then, in terms of its uh, content of analysis, this course analysis is focused on studying the use of the language in its social and cultural context. Uh, it focuses on examining how the language use to convey meaning in its social and cultural context while error analysis is uh, focused to the specific instance of language production and analyzing how analyzing the error so that we can understand why the errors happen number three explain about uh, discourse analysis, communicative competence, language, form and function, exchange, move, and discourse pattern. So first, about discourse analysis. So discourse analysis refers to the process of analyzing and studying uh, the use of language in its uh, speech community. And then, communicative competence. It refers to the ability of someone uh, to use the language effectively and appropriately. So someone can be said to have a, a com communicative competence if he or she can use the appropriate uh, pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, and know the function of the language when uh, she or he communicate to other person. And then, uh, language form and function. So language form uh, refers to the structural aspect of the language such as pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, and many others. While the language function refers to the use of the language in its speech community or how the language used to achieve the, the communicative objective. Next is exchange. So exchange is a term in spoken discourse which refers to the uh, to the pattern of how the 
the speakers take turns in speak in conversation or communication and then move move also a term in in spoken discourse which refers to the uh, unit of communication in unit of communication that serve as a specific function or a purpose in communication and then the last is discourse pattern so discourse pattern refers to the structure of how the language use uh, how the language organize and use in conversation okay number four uh, what is the scope of discourse analysis in spoken spoken discourse? So, as we know, in human life, it's always surrounded by things for communication, uh, whether in written or spoken. And then, to com we communicate each others to convey to deliver meaning, a message. Now, to understand the meaning behind the message uh, we need we need to make the message uh, more uh, easily to understood by others and here we need this cause analysis because uh, it's this is the main focus of this cause analysis number five is about analyzing analyzing uh, conversation so conversation is between m and w about you number five is about analyzing uh, the the converse the move the function and the internal structure of the conversation uh, so in this conversation it consists of four moves the first move is the apology from M to W and then uh, the, the second move is uh, the knowledge from M that he apologized for what he what what he have been doing and expressing her regret and the third move is uh, W dismissing the apology by saying forget it and then the last move is M insisting in apologize and asking for forgiveness so the function of this the function of the move itself First pre apology sequence uh, when M state that he apologize about something and then apology section and then rejection by W by saying to forget what just happened and the last request for forgiveness by M. The internal structure itself uh, is IRF initiation respond and follow-up number six uh, what is explained about micro and macro analysis cohesion and coherence grammatical cohesion device and lexical cohesion device so micro and macro analysis is a way to carry out a written analysis written discourse analysis so the macro analysis itself focus on analyzing the vocabulary and grammar including uh, cohesion relationship and grammatical relative regulative in particular text and macro analysis itself focus on investigating the organization of the text such as its patterns and types and next the cohesion and coherence so cohesion refers to process a uh, process which the text is tied up together by its linguistic device such as the cap and grammar and cohesion is uh, uh, no 
next cohesion and coherence so cohesion uh, refers to the way in which text is tied up together by its linguistic device such as vocab and grammar so cohesion is the process of how the text tied up together while coherence uh, the the result from this process the more sentence uh, structure or orderly the more it can be understood the more the more it's coherence to people and then grammatical cohesion device it's a device uh, that used to create coherence in text grammatical cohesion consists of four types namely reference substitutions ellipses and conjunction lexical cohesion device itself is also a device that used to investigate to investigate the process of how the text uh, constructed uh, namely the collocation okay next number seven uh, the question is how to analyze the text pattern in discourse analysis so there's three ways namely problem situation pattern a generic to specific pattern and the last is flame counter flame pattern so the uh, problem and solution there are four functions namely situation problem and then uh, response and the last is evaluation the evaluations is about uh, whether the response to the problem is positive or negative and if it's negative then we need to repeat the pattern again until it becomes positive next generic to specific pattern so first we need to choose a topic or a subject uh, that give a generic statement and then uh, we made it to be more specific about the generic statement before and then we made it even more specific after that and etc and then next claim counter claim pattern so in claim and counter claim pattern there are situation claims counter claims reason and evidence the situation itself is about uh, an event that happens that affects someone in a particular uh, place and time and the counterclaim is an assertion of some things that's true and then counterclaim itself is uh, something that support uh, something that needs to be supported by uh, facts whether it be reason or question and then reasons the explanation of why the events happened and the last is uh, evidence evidence is something that uh, made we b that makes we believe that this statement is true the next question number eight is about how to analyze the sentence pattern so there are some ways to analyze the sentence pattern first by using simple linear progression uh, in this pattern an item in a rim become a them in the next sentence it's sometimes uh, found in academic writing style and then constant progression uh, for the constant pro progression it's different from simple linear progression in constant progression uh, the theme because the theme for the next uh, sentence and not from the rim and next derived hyperthematic progression or multiple rim uh, in the first paragraph the theme uh, and then become a rim and then it contains some point the rim contains some point and for each point uh, it become a dim for the next sentence next splitting progression it's quite similar with the hyper derived hyperthematic progressions but uh, the rim is not uh, described uh, describe very obvious next linear constant progression for linear con constant progressions uh, it's the combination of the simple linear and constant progressions 
and then constant linear progression is the the uh, the combination of constant progression and simple linear and next elliptic progressions uh, for the elliptic progressions uh, the third sentence and so on the dim is not uh, not not mention it again the next question number nine is about what's the factor to consider in selecting targeted uh, discourse to be analyzed to get required or relevant information on language use in context and why the factors are essential so there are some factors namely contextual relevant uh, diversity and representativeness and then data availability uh, sample size, authenticity and natura, naturalness, variability and rage, it, and the last is ethical consideration. And next, the last, uh, the last question, number 10. Do you agree with saying that discourse analysis has a significant contribution to English language pedagogy and explain your reasons? Uh, yes. Uh, Discourse analysis have a very, very significant contribution to English language teaching because uh, many English language teachers focus on teaching the structure or the form of the languages, but they forgot about the function. And with discourse analysis, uh, we can learn more about the function because someone who have a good communicative, communicative. Uh, communicative competence uh, also needs to know the use of the language in its speech community okay so for the con conclusion uh, the discourse analysis really have a very significant role in pedagogy itself because as we know that language it doesn't only uh, contents about the forms but also the functions so to achieve the communicative competence that we all want to achieve as the language learners, uh, we need to learn discourse analysis to getting know more about the function of the language. And my suggestion for the teachers, maybe they can uh, include this type of uh, le learning, learning the function of the language in the curriculum. I think that's all for me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm sorry if there is a lot of shortcomings.